Anyway, so orbital diagram for sodium, all right? You find sodium, it's over here. How many electrons are we putting in there for it? 11. 11. How do you know that? Oh, wow, we're all participating because of the camera. That's cute. So you have 11 uh, electrons there for sodium. Now, just as this is, I'm going to like go through this again just to give you a quick reminder of, of like how everything works since this is review. So sodium goes right there. Remember the way you do this. You start at the beginning and then you're going to trace your way. You know, you go from 1s, then you go back down to 2s, then to 2p, then you get to 3s. And you're going to stop right there. So you go 1s, 2s, 2p, 3s. Now, something that you probably want to remember, if you don't already, is that remember if you have s, that's one orbital, p is three orbitals, d is, does anybody remember? Five. Five, five and then f is seven. seven. Congratulations. Okay. So we have one s, we have two s, we have two p, and then we have three s. Now, uh, what we do with this, we have to fill it in. So we have 11 electrons, you go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Now, if you didn't want to actually count it out, the other way you could have done this, as a reminder again, is just said, there's sodium. Uh, it's, it's the first thing in 3S, so fill everything up before that, and then just, you know, fill it in there. Now, that's an orbital diagram. That's what we did already. Next thing we're going to talk about is something called an electron configuration. And here's the important part of this. You're going to have to know the vocabulary that will distinguish between orbital diagram and electron configuration. Like if I say orbital diagram, it's the thing with the arrows. If I say electron configuration, you're going to realize it's the thing with exponents. So here's how we do this. Instead of drawing out each individual electron and all that, all you do, you go 1s, and then how many electrons are in the 1s sublevel? Two. two. So all you do is put a little exponent two right there. Then two s. How many do we got there? Two. Just put a little two there. That's all you do. It's a lot faster. Two p. What do we got? Six. Six. And then three s. How many do I have there? I have one. It can hold two, but how many do I actually have one. present? One. So that's the electron configuration. That's a lot shorter, isn't it? And you can see where as you go with this, this will save you a lot of time. And yeah, honestly. So you see, and you see how they're different. Now you, yeah. No, it's okay, what? Well. You see what? I don't get how 3s is one. The, re the reason 3s is one is because in the actual 3s sublevel, there's only one electron. There's only one arrow. And the way I want you to think of it, like, you see how there's two possible spaces here? But sodium's in the first one, right? So that's why it's only one. If it was over here, if it was magnesium, which is what that is, then it'd be two. Okay? But like, let's say, what if you had two 3D? Yeah. Like, say, and we have the same problem. Say, only one if it's, let's say, you have titanium. Well, then it'd be two, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to do one. That's the next example I'm going to do is out of there. So hang on, I'll show you. Yeah. If you were to do the electron configuration, how, like, do you always have to do the first one, the diagram one? No, you do not. But how would you know how So here's how you would do this without the diagram. That's the next thing you got to see. So if you were, we were doing sodium, then what you would do, you would just write out 1s. And you know that 1s is going to be filled up, so you just go 1s2. Then you're going to go to 2s. You know it's going to be filled, so you just write 2s and it can hold 2. Then you get to 2p, and you know 2p is going to be filled, so you just write 6 because it's filled. The only one that you know will not be totally filled, potentially, is the last thing. So that's the only thing you really have to actually figure out. Okay? Yeah? <laughs> there are actually, like, several exceptions, but, I don't, but we're not going to get into it in this class. Okay, and so you don't need to concern yourself with them. Yeah? Say for like selenium, you know how like you make, we had like some extra, like at the end, yes. we didn't put arrows on? So we don't need to include those in our answers? 
No, you do. But they're they're just blank then. Okay. okay. All right. Uh, let me show you the last part now. Noble gases. Noble gas notation, or we'll say configuration. <laughs> So this part is even shorter, but and when it's first introduced to you, it can be a little, uh, yeah. So here's the thing. I want us to find, we have sodium again. What is the element, or pardon me, what is the noble gas that is above, that is above sodium in the periods? And the way you do this, not the, not, not the element, the noble gas. You go up, then you look over, What's the noble gas that's above sodium? Neon. neon. So here's what you do. You write neon in brackets. Then you write down... Seriously, does the bell need to be in the video? Anyway. <laughs> so then you take neon, and all you're going to do now, you're just going to write the configuration after neon. So what we're doing is this. This is nice. We're saying that, okay, we have neon. And we're saying that that neon that we wrote out represents everything before it. Then all we do is write that after it. So it saves you a lot more trouble. And this is really nice for when they get really long. Like mercury. Yeah, so all you have to do is write down a couple things then. Yeah, uh, sorry, first, then you're... And the noble gases are always filled up. So that's why we can do this. They are not exceptions. They're always like that. But you'll always like have only one couple of left Well, no. no, you could potentially have up to three or four. It depends what element you have. Like, if we had something like over here, then you're going to have to write out, you know, like 6S, 4F, 5D, 5P, but just one row of it, not everything above that, okay? Mary. <laughs> You can only put noble gases in brackets like that, yes. Wait, what if we do it? What, like oh, pardon me. Go ahead. Sorry. <laughs> what if we do it? But like, when we get towards the end, we actually start putting the arrows. That you mean, like, do it, but then put the arrows after it? No, like, do it, but then at the end, put the arrows so that way you won't, like, get confused. And there's an option. I know what you're saying. You can do that to help you out, I guess, if you want. Yeah, that's fine. If that if that's like your way of making sure you did it right, that's fine. Tip me one. So I get the one from the fact that we have sodium here, and like I was saying, it's got one. It has one electron. Like if you look at its orbital diagram, it has one electron in three s, just one. That's where that one is coming from. Okay. And what we're saying is the other ten electrons are taken, we're, sh we're saying they're part of neon. They're, that's the configuration for neon. So they're represented by this stuff right here. So we just don't need to show it, that's all. Now again, if it was, if it was magnesium here, it'd be two instead of one. Okay, but it's not, it's, it's sodium. Okay, uh, we're, we'll, we're gonna do another one in a second. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. For the noble gas thing, that, 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 that's probably the easiest way for you to do it, yeah. All right. 